Stone recording at 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 Stone
would be a situation again, look at an example that you are writing to, for example, you found somewhere, somewhere you ended up having a parking ticket, and, uh, and you've got that ticket, but you still feel that you've not got it. Um, you know, you had parked, you are absolutely correct, but you've got an error. So what you have to do is give a presentation, and that presentation will be in the form of a formal to the, uh, you know, the, Council or civil so authority will be able to appeal that uh, decision of the decision of it. And what you tend to do is you write a formal letter out, and that formal letter basically is the tone, the tone, some information which is quite crystal, which is quite you know, crystal, crystal, and you tend to follow a format that you have a story, which you're trying to narrate, which is a beginning, which has a good, and it has a good. So what you do is you write. Uh, in, in a formal term, which is distinct, which is talking, talking about you know, the circumstances under which this ticket is given, why this ticket is not uh, uh, correct, and correct. what and you want um, in terms of your know, the decision, so that an action is actually defined and what text to kind of. <laughs> And you know also the white the underlying message that you are sending across the that paper. And in some cases, what you do is you to highlight the information or kind of make it distinctive. What you do is you hold certain, um, you know, let's um, <coughs> say certain um, things with regards to making that piece of information that can be quite distinctive by kind of holding it, holding it or emphasizing it or you know, underlining it so that the meaning and the meaning of the other part becomes the case. Now, most of the sentences that you write or the way you make the letter uh, in terms of this could be fully formal. So you start with the SR matter, you start with the rules of the basic principles, then you end up putting in that certain what is highlighted when you check. If I give you a report or a letter or a need in form of the position, you will be able to pick out know the rules which we generally tend to follow when you're writing or when you're writing in formal. So in some of those cases, these things have to be remembered. And if this is what kind of fines or underlines you do as a communication in business from the point of view of writing formal. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, sir, that's fine. Is that uh, any question on this? Uh, so Not so far, sir. It's making sense. Okay, so shall I proceed? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Now, one of the other things that we did get to see always, when you, uh, you know, let's look at a form of document which officially or officially communicates, uh, you know, something. So, can you talk about the correct uh, you know, your CV, your resume? Can you look at this as a form of a document formally communicates uh, or qualifications, your profile, and your skills? You are applying for a job. So, in the um, you know the unit, one of the key tasks, which is related to the assignments that you have to look at doing, is that you have to talk about uh, you know three fundamental ways in which you will communicate, and you have to. And the idea of the, the assignments is the set is that you want to look at familiarizing you with different forms that you normally use. So the first one is a formal letter. When you are applying for a job, it's like a CV. And the third thing that we look at is primarily making uh, a report. And then these are what I highlighted here in this particular handout that I emailed you last week. The first one that we look at is we discussing about some rules and the purpose of the communication. Uh, and one of the documents that we look at is your skills, your 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 education should be a CV, and this could be, you know, if you're complex in the case, you can have something which is well or any and you can use it for the task to be. The other one that we look at is, now, what is a report? A report is a report, basically a collection or a reflection of an event that you are doing, or in some cases, like a covering letter or like a covering page that basically explains the situation to which you are responding to. And this is this is something which can be written uh, formally, and it can also be written informally. Now, the informal form of reports we normally term them as blogs if you're writing it online. That means you had an incident, you had a good experience. 
or you've, you've had a holiday and you want to share it uh, with your friends and family, what you end up doing is you can write it. If you talk about it, obviously, you won't be able to but if you write about it, or as we say, as you blog about it online, what will happen is that thing which is posted out as a narration uh, of the event, provide some sort of a summary in your own way, that tends to become a blog. But when you write that officially, um, and an example of this could be press release, which uh, sometimes you get to see a lot of reporters in the writing, and those are then published as news stories, and take the form of a official report. Here again, we are following the same rules of writing, uh, you know, using the word fishing. Um, you know, highlight this or something like and that is being done from a point of view of taking into consideration the rules and regulations and you communicate something formally and informally. So, to report like a press release would become a formal form of communication because it will be used for broadcast purposes, it's an offensive on a particular website, and it has to give concise, factual information uh, which is related to that incident or that particular event. In the case of a blog, because you're writing it informally, you're again using a written form of uh, communication. But because you're writing it, you write support, support your friends and family in general. Here, the tone is going to be much more and you're highlighting the experience in your own personal words. Again, um, but the language of the tone in which you write it slightly differ, and this is going to become an informal form of written communication. So, this is a second format that you can look at. I want to differentiate clearly between a report, which could be a formal report. Say, for example, if there's an incident which has happened and the police files a report, which is the first incident of the court, FIR, that would be something which is a formal report. But if if children in the school are equipped, the teacher comes back and comes back, uh, which is then circulated in a newsletter, would be a formal type of report that we have in some, it is informally kind of sharing the experience what the children have had during that trip, which they've had the uh, in the school. So there's a subtle difference between that being formal and written, because it's going to be published. It has to have factual details. Not to say that the informal reports do not have factual details of the incident that you have, event or incident that you have been attended. But the tone in which it is done does not follow the written rules of communication, which are defined especially in your writing something formally. The third thing that we look at is, is when you send out a letter or when you send out, you know, as I mentioned to you, there's a government and a complaint, um, or you're making an appeal in your presentation. In this case, what you do is you write out a formal letter, and this is an example of a formal letter, but I would classify this as a slide. I'll tell you where the subject differences are. But this is written out in the form of a letter, where you obviously address it to someone, so the, the address is there, and then you put a subject in this it basically kind of overarches uh, and defines what is the headline and why this communication is being done. And then you start off by you know, a formal narration being served madam, and then you have the information leaked out in three or four paragraphs, which is kind of uh, simulating the beginning of the story while you're writing. The mid explains the uh, problem or the situation or the appeal that you're doing, and towards the end, you kind of finalize and ask for a resolution. That resolution will be your asking for a cancellation. You are asking for more time for it to be paid, whatever it is, and then towards the end it formally. If it's going to be a formal thing, you tend to use yours truly, yours sincerely, or yours faithfully. But if it becomes an email, in that case, what will happen is the address that you write on top of it will go, Dear sirs, we come to you. Uh, you know, the subject actually will be because when you write an email, you write a column, you have CC and BCC, and then you have a subject. So, subject will come before you, dear sir, and the body of the email will become, you know, the, uh, this, these paragraphs will become the body of the email, and obviously dates, things like these, and other bits and pieces will, you know, be picked up automatically in the email. An email you normally end up with and you put your full name and, you know, your address down. <coughs> so if sometimes when you get to see that uh, you know when you send out um, things like um, 
sometimes you'll get to see uh, when you send out notices what they say uh, you know by email and post what they tend to do is the right to the line that means you're going to receive a copy of this communication by email and also going to be sent in the post so that sometimes when you receive formal communications or letters from um, you know our group is in email they tend to kind of post it on email so that the recipient receiving it does not have the opportunity to say that okay, I've not received it or it's denied that I've not received it on post or on email. So kind of build in depending on the seriousness of the message. If it's a notice, for example, on a prosecution or you know, something which has to be covered in most cases, you would just see this thing will be written somewhere just on the top as a headline. I say send by send by and email. Obviously, there are different rules and regulations, and you know, sometimes they are a bit flexible, but as long as the information is provided in this file, this then becomes a form of uh, a written communication, but it takes the form of a notice as against, you know, a letter or a request or an appeal. So, these three types in general you will have to look at, um, you know, with related to task three, this particular unit, and they are related to the different form of business communication which the assignment actually asks you to you know investigate so these are samples which i'm sharing with you and what you can do is you can easily change them um, and you know adapt them or even you can put in something which is totally related to you or maybe highlighting an event or an incident related to you so maybe the cv could be a cv uh, and report could be a personal statement or something which is like a student is written to take admission into a uh, uh, they could have a person stick to this course or you know, uh, join the university. Basically, what you have to do is you have to do a report. And that report could be a press release, it could be a statement of purpose that you do, study something which is related to an event that you find. For example, you could end up highlighting. Uh, highlighting uh, um, uh, you know, a tourist attraction, which you're writing to the council to include to, uh, you know, the, the Greater Manchester tourist information uh, to make the site popular, like that local tourist information popular. It could be driving an event, you could have a report. It could be something which allows uh, us from this point of time to participate in BBC, which is like BBC school reports. So they kind of highlight uh, uh, what is happening, and uh, they get, uh, get, uh, get, uh, get a chance and an experience to broadcast that live in the BBC school reports. So, something which basically is a report is what you have to do. And the third thing would be to basically look at a formal email and email letter. That means you would need to provide uh, how the communication done is done, uh, you know, basically an email or a formal letter. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, sir, that's fine. Okay, good stuff. So, I'll close that hand. What we will do is we will we'll do is we'll do we'll do getting into a bit of learning out some key just to understand a few things. These are slides which are quite fun. I'm just going to briefly skim them to ask me or stop me wherever you have any doubts or any doubts. Yeah, of course. So, uh, if you recall, last time we studied, we studied the general models of communication, and in the general models of communication, we looked at these five components. We call what these five components are, or the three components expanding on the five. Of general communication? Yeah, for in the process yeah, of the process. Um, <clears throat> The audience, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one was um, um so was was the, the hmm? The other side is the other side is uh, the other side. Yeah, so we have a sender, yes, have a sender, sender and your receiver. That is correct. So you had the sender on the other side, the receiver on the other side, and then you had the message. The receiver yeah. can respond, respond and understands the message, understand message, 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 provides a little feedback, 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 complete the communication process. The communication process. And right, this right. was expanded into two, two other um, uh, components. When we look at the whole process of communication. And that was, that was 
when the receive when the sender sends the message, encode the message as it's happening now with modern modes of technology. And on the other side, when it receives a bit of encoding of the message. Right, right. And to give you an example, give you an example, example will be helpful. You send an email to somebody. So if I have to send you an email, I send you an email to and then on the other side, then you receive who are receiving the email. Because when I send the email, say for example, the hotmail or the Gmail, I put it, the message, and it is the recipient which is a self, and the report will open it up to me, and the coding will be decoded to display the message. Right. Right, so what we've seen yeah, is that in the initial days, when we looked at um, you know, the invention of Morse code and Telegram, what we did see was the messages were communicating. Um, you know, they were communicating with anybody on the other side as a side that frequency of the Morse code. So we were able to interpret the message, and it, it did not have any security. And over the years, what we've seen is modern forms of communication that have now allowed us to basically encode the message, and it can be only decoded by the receiver who is intended, the intended receiver, that decoding and encoding happens with the help of technology. So in the case of internet, it's great to see when you browse on the e-commerce website, what you need to see is an SSL certificate. Which is a lock on the website. Kind of has a lock on the website. If I open something up, for example, okay, let's look at our website. And what you'll get to see is this form of communication, you know, has a bit of a security or lock next to it, which basically means that uh, when you open this website up, the activity is being tracked, or there is. So, um, um, the visitors' information is information on the site of the browser is being captured by a cookie, and that allows the information to be relayed actively to the site, which is uh, you know uh, the the intended creation of the site. So, for example, if I click on security, it basically says there is a certificate. There are cookies which are left on the browser at any given point in time. So, they could go back in and. I know of understanding where the user coming from, from which place the user is coming from, and something to do with analysis. So the use of technology, technology in communication, when we look at social, we look at you know written, and we look at uh, you know, verbal, there's a lot of security features that should be added in the communication medium to be secure, and that that is the role of technology that we to see. We talk about uh, you know how technology is enhancing communication is happening. Now, simple example, <laughs> before people in 1995, they invented the internet, there was no internet, there was no communication, yeah. by, communication by, there, was no, there were no websites or things like that. But over the years, uh, as the technology has evolved, uh, this has made the communication much more effective and easier. The internet has made so many things possible. Right, right. So when you look at this, what is happening is that because of the internet, we are able to send not just text, um, emails, but you can also video or you know, do live conferences like this. And that is all the of technology. So technology, to a certain extent, is safe to say it has enabled and it has created new forms of communication which are becoming much more effective. That means they are instant. So when you looked at in the early days, Telegram was that was being used to send a uh, you know, message uh, or to do, uh, um, share an event, share an event, was a celebration and things like that. But that used to take two or three days to reach, depending on how it was being sent and which location it was being sent. But over the years, um, that has disappeared as a medium of communication to a certain extent. It's because emails and telephone calls, you know, communication almost. So if you look at even 25 years back, in the phone lines, when you had to place an international call, and we operated to speak in the and then the operator would book the call on the other side and say, okay, are you willing to speak or take this call? Then the call is coming. But nowadays, it's pretty much is. So there is, a, there is a lot which has happened in terms of in the last two decades, which 
is because of technology, the enhancements in technology, and that is what has changed the whole process of communication. So when we studied the model, in particular the five or six, the five or six different models, we have come to a particular model which is now the contemporary model of communication because it utilizes and morphs all these previous models to try and actually enable communication. To see that. So what I meant with that is, <clears throat> sometimes what you did was an example, if you want to speak to somebody uh, who has, say for example, you want to speak to someone in Manchester, what you tend to do is you find a WhatsApp call, while the WhatsApp call is not happening or the sort of a distortion or delay on the call, then what you tend to do is you straight away convert that into a telephone call and speak to that person. So this is nothing but the technology in which you need to choose the right uh, channel to be able to communicate effectively. And that is what is technology which is cheapened, uh, you know, which is and as a result, this is effective and needs to be more faster communication. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine, sir. That's fine. Good stuff. Now, when we look at these are slides which are in some media slides. So when I get for example, general communication skills, sometimes what you do is you adapt your communication depending on the types of languages that you are speaking to, or the delivery of the message is up. So if you are in a, uh, let's put it this way, in a training seminar, what you tend to see is the training would have a different version in terms of uh, you know, speaking out or communicating with the beginning. He's in a position where he and has to use a bit of a space. In general, what I'm trying to say is, depending on the audience that you're interacting with, sometimes you change the language you need to deliver your message. That is the context of you could be selective in your work, you could choose a particular terminology or work, so the messages have no ambiguity, and it is understood clearly by the person or the audience who is listening to the now, you also get to see that in time, and you know, sometimes what you see is that um, you will have uh, what you call barriers. And one of the barriers that we look at would be barriers which are actual barriers or language barriers. For example, if I have a seminar, and I do have people from different uh, countries or different locations which receive different languages and to a certain extent that uh, could, you know, pose a barrier in terms of having a fuller interaction with the audience in terms of um, because of the relation of um, the language and also maybe the culture from which they are coming from. And that is what we tend to do when we speak to children. An example here, which I would say, you put your message and you deliver that, that like the ones so that the message is understood by the people that you know. So when you're having the same conversation with an adult, your message on your phone will have to be done. If there is a mix, in some cases, it becomes more conciliatory because you're trying to have a conversation with each And that is where the evidence of internal communication skills come in. So here is what we're trying to understand the skill sets which are. Um, you know uh, what we need to understand when we talk about audiences, if we talk about facts and opinions, and what are the differences when we do communication and communication in what situations. Now, uh, the other thing that I would look at is sometimes we also have certain techniques to deliver, uh, you know, a message. The reason of using the techniques uh, while delivering messages is to try and engage with the audience. Um, you will see how many what is happening sometimes when you, when you see people making gestures, nodding their head or using their hands, hands while they are speaking to make the message much more impacting and also to try and deliver the message uh, using both verbal as well as uh, body language in terms of communication to make it effective. Now, sometimes you will see that this happens most of the, um, you know, face to face or in situations where uh, the speaker is. Um, you know, speaker has a lot of audience. That could be an example of the or on here a lecture, uh, or you know, something like that. So, here what we tend to do is if you want to look at techniques, sometimes to look at delivery of communication uh, of your message. 
what you do is you introduce some uh, you know, aids. So say for example, current I'm delivering a lecture, and this is more or less being done using you know some equipment like uh, a Mac, internet. I'm using a computer. And that is then on your side and please help me to communicate my message much more in a friendlier way and in an easier way. So sometimes what you'll get to see is unique presentations and unique pictures, icons, images to break the message down so it does not become quite monotonous or in some cases much complex. So you try and simplify the message by using um, uh, things by including um, you know, pictures, diagrams, or you know by changing the points. I have done on the slides. So certain things are bold, but we need to they are in a map to attract attention and kind of, you know, give it a bit of a headline message. So in some cases, uh, it's been done to kind of a mark from what else has been uh, you know, put onto the slide. So these are things which all also can be journal communication skills. The other things that we look at is very uh, quickly we look at interpersonal skills, uh, which we also use for user skills. And why do we call them interpersonal? Because these are skills which a person will use to express the message. So, you know, verbal, sign, signals, or bodily expression in some cases. So these are things which are used uh, predominantly on a uh, you know, these are things which are predominantly expressed by using your senses, and this could be mostly sight and hearing. And the idea is to, um, you know, kind of make the message more personal, or make the interaction more personal to the user which you are communicating. Um, certain examples of you know, personal skills uh, when you are using or practicing using them. You get to see that there are barriers. I mean, for example, uh, it could be that um, the two people are talking to you and they are intimately talking. Or sometimes you see that the mobile phone rings or they put the knock and put on. What you get to see is there will be a bit of a distraction between uh, a distraction for them. It will end up breaking the communication between the two of them or a group of people who are, who are uh, having that communication. And sometimes you get to see, you know, like I do the session. I get to see an ambulance or a police or an outside, even though I'm quite far off from the home road. But you get to see a bit of a background noise, and that could be uh, a barrier. So, these are basic things that you need to be aware of when we look at understanding human communication. Now, the other bit that we look at is sometimes you will see that there are questions being asked of very few ways. And a typical example of what I normally take up is uh, using a, a training seminar or a training session. Sometimes the trainer will ask open ended questions. And sometimes he will ask those questions. So what he wants to do is with these simple questions, he wants to engage with his audience, get them uh, you know, into the mood of you know, talking and obviously opening up. And sometimes you get to see that we will do an icebreaker session and that is primarily done because he wants to know who is his audience, to which he is going to deliver or how he is going to deliver, and also to get them talk to him more in the conversation. And close ended questions are done. I want to elicit a response. And you want a very calculated response because of the, the conscious of the time that you're running the session, or it could be the fact that you want concise, uh, you know, answer to come out that it relates directly to the question which has been asked. So these are situations where you look at open-ended, closed questions, or you know, you invite, uh, as we say sometimes, the introduction. That means you invite questions of the session in between the training seminars or uh, you know, training and development seminars because we want the audience to be engaged in the process of the most, um, uh, in the process of training or understanding what is being delivered. Now, similarly, there are some basic rules that you follow when you look at writing. And here, uh, these things would include things like grammar and spelling, look at the structure, follow a logical uh, structure in presenting the content. We also look at relevant information being presented and to a certain extent you sign it off. You kind of you know use the process of something called the 
your own work. So sometimes when you submit your assignments, when you, what you do is you proofread it, you run it through a spell checker or a grammar checker, to ensure that everything that the full stuff and they tend to be you know, done because you have to assume something is lost, which is going to be formally assessed in the case of work. And here, what you want to do is make sure of your grammars and spellings. Take care of your grammars and spellings if they are trying. And in certain cases, when you write off a task, what you're doing is you're kind of using bold or underline or italics. It's ensured that important points or facts that you're presenting or are presenting in your session are not missed. Um, there are other bits that we used to look at sometimes is um, a typical exercise of looking at note taking. So when you're in a classroom, sometimes when the teacher is teaching, sometimes you end up taking notes. And this is a process of to which you look at summarizing and summarizing pieces of important uh, uh, which you feel you might require uh, at the later stage. And some of these and things, are done, things you know, using the use of uh, you know the technology. So you would have an app called Evernote. We only have on our phones to take notes, um, and there are lots of others uh, in, in similar category. And sometimes you can write these notes, um, you know, because you want to um, get that piece of information, you know, important piece of information, noted um, for using uh, in the future. Now. There is one other thing that I will also point out is that with the advancements in technology, what we have seen is the creation of content and the distribution of content in documents has become tremendously easy. I'll give you a simple example. Uh, let's put it this way. If you have a lot of car insurance, a lot of car insurance, or you know, a lot of companies will sell you products and services, or which sell you um, products and services which require agreements to be signed, or you know, credit agreements to be signed. What they tend to do is they do not send you things to the post. What they do is they send you soft copies of the credit agreement, which they end up asking you to sign using uh, you know, an electronic facility or a software. So some of these electronic documents which are sent in order to ensure their uh, uh, secrecy and also to ensure their security, what they use is they use the technology and software, which is software like VeriSign, DocuSign, and documents allow you to sign the documents electronically, and a copy of that by the time comes to an email and you sign, and a copy of that goes back you just send it for sign. And this is reduced, um, you know, basically enabled or reduced. It has reduced paperwork. It has reduced the delays in time which is required for you to. In, in a normal situation, what they would have done is send that in the post so with a prepaid envelope, with a sign, sent it back to them, and that would have taken three, four, five days, depending on how quickly you were able to respond or put that back in the post. Now, this has been. Uh, you know, here they made it almost, uh, they've kind of done away with a lot of time because they send these documents electronically using a software and that in, uh, uses a technology to, um, you know, enhance security and obviously, um, you know, um, let's put it this way, it's a bit of distribution which you manage so that information only is the intended user, but at the same point in time, it is secure. And once you sign it electronically, it is pretty much uh, you must take it as uh, you know, uh, take an equal to a signed copy of the document, uh, you know, which is required by the company back because it could be, for example, if it's a Now, there are other bits that are there which are which we look at sometimes we um, you know generate something called surveys or forms that we send them. and these are the primarily to keep uh, from your intended customers or you know your recipients of communication. So an example would be um, if you're attending a training event, what tends to happen is the trainer would ask you to fill up a survey or a feedback towards the end of the training. And this gives them feedback in the written form to understand how did the training session go, was it long enough, was it, and was it in, in, uh, engaging enough, was the content which was delivered in the session relevant enough to the audience who was not seeing it. And some of these can be done electronically using MailChimp, SurveyMonkey, you know, Google Forms, and most more and more companies are beginning to use technology to be able to, you know, kind of uh, give feedback on all these type of communication. Now, the other 
with the PC in terms of technology, uh, especially with the coming of telecoms, what we do get to see is that there are lots of ways through which we can do communication using um, uh, using the uh, medium of phone, for example, in particular. And this would mean that the communication could be interactive. It could be a push communication or a pull communication. And a simple example of that, which I'll give you, is on most of our phones, we have emails nowadays. And what most some users tend to do is they tend to kind of pull or basically get the emails as and when they want. So when you go in onto the phone, what you do is you enable something called push or pull notifications. And this means that as in when you decide to download the emails, emails will download. So what you do, go into your email file and you pull it down, refresh it, and there are new emails that will download to your phone. And that is something which is an example of full communication because this is where you are choosing to download the new emails or new bits of information that are coming in as and when you decide. Push communication is the opposite. Where what tends to happen is the information is pushed to your phone from the server. So the new email arrives, it is pushed directly to your phone, um, which basically means you do not have an option to uh, refresh and download. That's why you want to come to your uh, phone or your PC or your, your, your Mac or whatever it is. So push form of communication could be text messages when advertising messages are sent by companies. Uh, you know, for example, if you bought a pizza from the company, what they tend to do is on a Friday afternoon, late evening, they'll always send you a text message if you're within their catchment area. That form of communication which is pushed to you and you do not have control on it is basically push form of communication using technologies. And pull will be you will basically, you know, get to subscribe to an email or a newsletter wherein if you choose to receive that then only that information comes to you. So you could subscribe to an RSS you could subscribe to a blog, you could subscribe to a newsletter, or a bulletin board service, and that is where you will get the news coming in as and when you want it. And that is why it is a full form of communication. Now these forms have become possible because of the uh, advancements in technology. And they are becoming quite important in the classification of communication methods because in some cases, when you look at interactive communication, interactive communication is only happening both the people are talking simultaneously uh, as we are doing like a And in some cases, there's a that for response coming in response to them. So the use of mediums through which this can happen and they will instantly arrive at things like telephone calls, video conferencing, or Skype calls, or you know, or having meetings with them and everybody tends to interact and have and that conversation with conversation say something and you can immediately respond. Push and pull communication is happening with the use technology, and this will only be available when you are using that piece of technology. A phone, a PC, a tablet, anything to do with a device or an electronic device which allows you to receive that communication in a particular form, whether it's video message, emails. You know, uh, any sort of fax or you know, when you receive this, receive this call on the phone, these the voicemail, these is an example of push communication. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, that's fine, sir. So, so is that okay so far, Kasim? Yeah, that's fine, sir. Fine. Okay, good sir. Now, looking at some of these meetings, what we want to be able to do is, if I relate to the, you know, tasks or the assignments, what will mean is that in certain situations, you'll have to present what is the most appropriate method of uh, using technology and information for a business. So sometimes what you tend to do is you create a business advertising and they send out a lot of newsletters to attract customers. Are and using technology. The newsletters will go using the software, and then that information is being sent out with sort of an option. Okay, 
ten percent discount on this or fifteen percent discount on that. Would basically constitute an offer which is going out to the customers with a relevant, uh, you know, uh, redemption option. So in some cases, what you get to see is, you say, okay, to avail of this ten percent discount, put this voucher code, or you know, put this code in, this one code in, whatever it is. So what we have to do is, is you will have to take an example for the merit task, which is in this case, an example of how. A business will say appropriately use technology to send out a message. So in this case, it would be um, a, if you look at a particular restaurant, uh, an example that I gave you, Pizza Hut, for example, they would use text messaging, they would use um, you know emails or newsletters to be able to send this out on the weekends to a catchment area. So here you have to give us a specific example using a company showing their their products and services what they are you know, selling and what kind of message they are using to send it out. Is that okay? That's fine, sir. Yeah, understandable. And then, and then you look at the distinction that what you're looking at is you have to manage and facilitate a question and answer session to demonstrate the knowledge uh, you know, in terms of communication skills. So here, a typical example would be that you are looking at, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, to achieve distinction, looking at uh, giving an example of a press conference, where you, as a, as a journalist, are asking a question and you are eliciting a response or an answer from somebody who is doing that press conference. That could be one example. Something to do with uh, in class, you could tell that you are studying in a class and you ask the teacher a question and the teacher is responding to you. So here, the distinction does that you can focus is on uh, you able to demonstrate how you ask a question and what kind of an answer you can get, which basically shows that you uh, you know, kind of recording or noting that response time. So this would constitute maybe a press conference uh, kind of a scenario, a teacher student kind of a scenario. You're looking at uh, a scenario where you've gone out to you know, wine and dine with your family to a restaurant. And here, what you do is when you ask, you know, the person to come in and just what you're doing with your. Uh, asking them a few questions, you'll have to basically get out by saying, okay, and this is the scenario, I'm out to have a uh, food with the family, I'm out to this restaurant, and that is when you know, you have to show some pictures, some pictures that happen between you and the manager or you as a waiter, to basically highlight how great communication is. To get that, uh, get that you know, response, which is more than a specific taste of what is something which is a person going to know. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, one now, last one is some part of it is part of it is the last slide which I have. I'm going to close this. The previous one uh, was looking at basically demonstrating a situation where you're responding to, uh, you know, uh, questions of business information. If you remember this last presentation, this was related to the task point or the distinction task. I made up this situation and okay, the customer was ordered, you know. The situation is uh, uh, the customer got irritated by the order and not got ordered because of a certain problem. And what I did was I made the situation within the staff saying that the customer has ordered a print of an Amazon which was supposed to be delivered by so and so. so that uh, the, the customer had taken a holiday at work and from work to be able to up for his daughter. But because it was a birthday, that was the occasion, and the customer got delivered because of an accident. You know, he's upset. So what you have to do is react to that situation by uh, becoming, say, for example, a, a customer representative, uh, you know, person, uh, by taking up that uh, you know, dealing uh, with that customer. So here, what she has to do is. Uh, explain the reason for the delivery of the bell, uh, and then and what she has also done is she has offered a gift voucher to the customer to be able to find out the them the reputation of the company, in fact, and also to ensure that, that you know uh, the, the situation is under control and there's a long term advance which is going to be delivering, but unfortunately, it's not going to come to the time that we're expecting or we're expecting to work, but it will happen later in the day. So, what she has managed to do is bring the customer. Now, um, 
uh, manage the situation, uh, manage to retain the customer, and here you are uh, through this process of what you've done, what you've done, responded to his question or a situation which is because of non delivery, and we presented that in the form of a, a message which would be appropriate for use within a business context. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That makes sense. Yeah. So that, that is where I will stop today, and what we are going to do is I'm going to send you. Obviously, I know there is a the presentation I to is already on, but I'm going to send you a small sample. Basically, you know, give you some more details uh, to understand the tasks which are involved in running our company. Right, right, right. Any any other thing? Any other questions you want to ask? No, the sound is going really well, to be honest. Sorry, going in? Sorry, going in? Um, excuse me, I didn't hear that. Sorry, sir. Uh, there's a bit of a voice echo today, actually. I don't know. Uh, it's because maybe you're on the phone or the tablet. But, um, I was, what I was asking you, do you have any queries or questions so far? So far, almost. Oh, no. almost. Not so far, sir. So, not so far. So far, so good. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's yeah. fine. There is a book that is also available on this for uh, you to come in. It will be a good book that is a very generic book on coming. Now, what I would suggest is more insight and knowledge into this unit. Uh, my suggestion is some pages on the for you to go through so that it helps you and get some theoretical steps. In regards to learning outcomes that they cover. Right. Oh. Okay. That's that's good. That's that's good. So hopefully, so if, hopefully if, um, you know, if you're not able, to, if you're not able, to, if you're not able to, the idea would be try and the session in the tablet or the tablet and able to interact. Uh, okay, Carson. Okay, Carson. Yeah, 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 sir. Good stuff. So let me send this out to you.